Good morning, Church of the City. How you doing today? You good? Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Praise God. Praise God. So grateful to be here with you this morning. Wasn't worship good? Like always, right? They do so good. Stand to your feet with me as we prepare to read the word today. This is the last message of the series, What's in This House? Turn to someone and ask them, what's in this house? Turn to someone else and ask them, what's in this house? We've been spending the last several weeks talking about our culture here at Church of the City, what we believe in, what we stand for, some things that are culturally important to us, uh, such as freedom, such as prophecy, such as many other different kind of things. We spent some time for a few weeks talking about worship, and uh, God's really been touching and moving us, and it's been really, really good. Amen? All right. So turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. I've only got just a few verses for you today. That's not too bad. Last week I read the whole story of the creation process to you. All right, 1 Timothy chapter 2, we're going to read verses 1 through 5. It goes like this. It says, First of all, then, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Everybody say everyone. For kings and all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good, and it pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone, everybody say everyone, to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and humanity, Christ Jesus himself, human. Father, speak to us today. Teach us something. Lord, I thank you, Father, for your presence that's here this morning. Lord, we just worship you and we exalt you, God. We lift you up. We turn our attention and our focus upon you right now. We put aside all distractions, anything that might hinder us from receiving your word today, God. And we thank you, Father God, that our eyes are fixed upon you. We thank you, Father God, that you're speaking to us today, that you're encouraging us today, that you're motivating us today, that you're imparting wisdom and knowledge and understanding into us today, God, that we shall receive fresh revelation today, Lord. We thank you for your word, God, which is life and truth. We thank you today for being with us in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. If you're taking notes... The title of today's message is A Culture of Prayer. A Culture of Prayer. You may be seated. Praise God. During uh, worship, I had to be in the back running sound and lights today. It's the first time ever that we've been without our one and only Buster Clark, who is our, our tech arts director there out of town in Washington, D.C. Um, for a, a wedding for a family member. So Buster and Ashley are out today. Uh, so we extend our love to them and we thank them uh, because today we all got a little piece and a taste of what it's like to not have the professionals in the house. Um, and so anyways, I hope everything was was good during worship, but um, we're, we're grateful for the wonderful team that we have. Amen. All right, and so we've been in this series, What's in This House? We've been talking about different things that are culturally important to us. Um, we've been talking about things that are important to us right now, but are important to us in the past. We started out, these things were important to us, and moving forward, they will always be important to us. And so one of the things, and we wrap up this series talking about prayer, because prayer is super important to us. You should say amen. Amen. Prayer is super important to us. Now, you, your prayer life ind individually, like whatever that looks like, that's up to you. But for here as a church, we are a church that prays. 
Amen? We are a church that prays. And if you didn't know it, you should know it. Every single Thursday morning, there's a group of us that gets in here at 1030, and we pray the heavens down every single Thursday so that we may have the power of God present here on Sundays and everything else. We pray for you when you're sick. We pray for all different kinds of things. And we believe that it's because of our prayer that we see the move of God in this church. Everybody say amen. Amen. Come on, how many of you have heard it? More prayer, more what? Power. More prayer, more power. It's important to understand that. We see that Paul begins this text with this phrase. He says, first of all, turn to your neighbor and tell them, first of all. Come on, tell them with some attitude. Say, first of all. There you go, right? Uh, Some of y'all are really good at a phrase like that when it comes to talking to your spouse or whatever it may be. You may you may need a little correction or something. I don't know, but you're like that's I'm used to saying first of all, and he's sitting right next to me, and that's easy for me to say. No, this is a statement that that is demonstrating that what Paul is about to say next, what what's about to follow out of his mouth is important. And it's a sign that we need to listen to what he's about to say, right? And how many of you know that if it's important to the writer, it surely was important to the father? They only wrote according to what the father spoke. So if Paul says, hey, first of all, da-da-da-da-da-da, right? How many of you know that is what the father is saying? He wants us to be attentive and, and listen to the importance of the things that was then wrote out right after, which is all about prayer, right? There were a few things that were mentioned, petition, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving. So the first of all is highlighting the, import- the importance of those four things, Which in reality, all four of those things revolve around prayer because they are prayer, okay? And I will teach you about each and every one of them today. But in in, in the grand scheme of things, all four of those things are about prayer. So before we appoint leaders, before we have a service, before we can do anything in our community, somebody has to pray, Come on, somebody say amen to that. Before we can be effective in any kind of way, before we can reach our city for Jesus, before we can do anything, someone has got to get on their knees and pray. Amen? Prayer is so crucial. Prayer is so important. You must understand today that the power for a life to be transformed and the power for a life to be changed as well as the city changed and the city transformed and all that kind of stuff comes first by prayer. We cannot go forth and do what the Father would have us do if we're not prayed up first. If we haven't communicated with him first and received uh, maybe an answer or received instructions or whatever it may be from the Father, we have got to go him to him for, with prayer Excuse me, before anything else. And so I want to spend time today talking about those four things that are mentioned in the text. And so if you're taking notes, I'm going to jump right into it already. Four types of prayer that shape the culture. Four types of prayer that shape the culture. Number one is this. Number one is prayers of petitions. We see the word petitions first right there in the text, right? And so we know that this is important, and, and Paul speaks this out. So what are petitions. If you're taking notes, it's, it's a specific need you convey to God. A petition is a specific need you convey to God. See, somehow in church culture, we've become embarrassed to make our petitions known because it has to do with our needs. A lot of people don't want to tell others what their needs are. So will you pray for me for such and such and such and such, right? And it's almost got to the point in today's church that it's embarrassing to go to someone for prayer because we have no idea what they're going to think about us or what they may say about that thing that we're petitioning. That's sad, right? It shouldn't be that way. But the Bible says that you have not because you ask not, right? You have not because you ask not. How many of you know that there are people in church that are pouting over what they haven't prayed about yet? 
I'll just let that sit for a second. There are people that pout all day long, and they haven't even prayed about it yet. The people saying, well, if, if, if they knew, they'd be praying for me about it. But have you made your petition known? Well, they, they didn't pray for me when I was sick. Did you make your petition known? Ask and you shall receive. It's not ask and maybe you'll receive. It's ask and you shall receive. You are going to receive it. But first, you have got to make your petition known. So tell your neighbor, make your petitions known. Come on, say it nice and loud. Say, make your petitions known. Now, I do want to address something that is important to the health of an individual, but also important to the health of the church. When someone comes to you, I want everybody to listen just real clearly on this because like, this is so important. It's very, very important to me. When, when someone comes to you and asks you to pray, about, pray with them for a need, it is not your responsibility to shame that person based on their need. We will not be a church that ever shames someone based on their need. Come on, can I get a loud amen for that? I think that is so important because I have seen people hurt. I have seen people leave the church. I have seen people completely turn their back on God entirely because someone took some words that they trusted and they gave it to them and said, will you please couple your faith with me and pray with me about this? And that person ran off and said, can you believe what that person told me? Can you believe what they're going through? And listen, I, you may say, well, that doesn't happen. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Pastor Sam and I have a podcast that we just started uh, three weeks ago. And it's all about church hurt. It's all about what people face in church. It's all about the struggles that people go through in church. It's all about the rejection. It's all about the turning away. It's all about all those kind of things. And listen, people have gotten good at saying, yes, I'll pray for you, but I'm going to go tell everybody about it. There's some things that you need to make known to others. If someone comes to you and says, I'm thinking about taking my life, well, obviously that's not something you keep to yourself. We need to let authorities know, and, and, and we need to get our leaders involved and all that kind of stuff. There's some serious things that, that have to take place. But when someone talks about a need that they have, and you go behind their back and you run their, your mouth about their need, that's foolish of you. Is it okay to say this in church? Because I feel this is really needed. I really do. I feel like this is really needed because I'm, I'm tired of seeing people hurt. Really. I'm tired of seeing people hurt. I don't need to know about sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so and this and that. You don't have to come to me and tell me everything. We just need to go to the Father in prayer. Amen. If someone says, will you pray with me about something, you better pray with them. But don't pray and then run your mouth. Hello. Listen, folks, if you can't be trusted by man, what makes you think you'll ever be trusted by God? If you can't be trusted with, with something that someone brings to you, listen, don't, don't expect to be trusted by God. Hear me out. Too many people get hurt because they thought they could trust. And that's sad right there. Too many people get hurt because they thought that they could trust. And so can we break that stigma? Can we, can we be a church who loves no matter what? Come on, somebody say amen. Can, can we be a church that, that anybody can trust us? That, that you look at yourself and, and you can say, anybody can trust me. Anybody can trust me. When they come to me, I know I can be trusted. But when I go to them, I know that they can be trusted too. Come on, can we be that kind of church? Amen. That if you have a struggle and you're embarrassed about that thing, that you make your petition known. And nobody's going to look at you and judge you or harm you or hurt you or talk bad about you. But we are going to go to the Father and say, in Jesus' name, they have asked, Lord, and anything that they ask, God, in your name, it shall be done. Can we be that kind of church? Come on, I'm not looking for weak people today. I'm looking for strong people today that say, yes, that's me. 
Because if that's not you, then I hate saying it, but you don't belong here. We're not that kind of church. We're the kind of church that love people and accept people and judge not lest you be judged. Amen? Hallelujah. Prayers of petition. The second type of prayer that shapes a culture is conversational prayers. We see that Paul says petitions, and then immediately right after he says prayers. And you think, okay, what in the world is just prayers? And when you really study and you come to find out what Paul's talking about here, he's talking about your personal conversational prayers with the Father. That's you and God, not you and someone else, not you and your best friend. Those are conversational prayers between you and God. Now, it may be elementary for us today, but this is really the more general uh, term for prayer, which is the most, which is really a communication system with God. We know that that's what prayer is. It's a communication with God, right? And these are the kind of things that Paul is saying. Paul is saying that you need to make your petitions known to others, but you also need to have your, your own prayer with the Father, that that's important too. First of all, right? Before anything else, first of all, petitions, but prayer. Listen, If your prayer life is weak, your spiritual life will be weak. I'm going to say it again. If your prayer life is weak, your spiritual life will be weak. If the only time you ever pray is on a Sunday morning, something is wrong. We have got to be people of prayer. And listen, we can't only pray when something's wrong. We can't only pray when something's wrong. We have got to have continuous conversations with the Father. He is wanting to commune with you. He is wanting to talk with you. He is wanting to get, you, get to know you better. He is wanting to hear from you. He's wanting to speak to you. All those kind of things. And listen, it's important that you carve out time every single day to have a conversation with Him. Well, what am I going to say? Talk to them. You don't have to, you don't, you don't, you don't think to yourself, well, what am I going to say to my husband before I even speak to him? Or what am I going to say to this person? You don't, that doesn't go through your mind every single time you talk, okay? You need to, you just need to go to the Father. You just need to talk to him. Tell him about your day. Tell him about your struggle. Tell him about the things that you're facing. Tell him about what's going on at work. Tell him about what you're seeing happening in your family. Like all those kind of things. Listen, he wants to hear from you. And he wants to have a conversation with you. How many of you know that Jesus knows what you need before you even start communicating to him in prayer? He already knows what you need. He already knows what you're going to say. He already knows everything that's going on in your life. So for you to hesitate and hold back to having a conversation with him is not right. We need to converse with him because there are things that he already knows that he is working behind the scenes and he is waiting to pull the trigger on them. But until you converse with him, it's not going to happen. We have got to be in conversation with God. Listen, prayer is not a monologue. It's a conversation with the king. It's not a monologue. It's a conversation with the king. It's important that as a body of believers that we're all conversing with the Father. We need to all have our prayer life strong and in check. We've got to be praying to the Father. Let me tell you something about God. You're waiting to hear from him, but he's waiting to hear from you. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's a good God. And you're sitting around waiting to hear from him. But I'm telling you, in reality, he's waiting to hear from you. He wants to hear your voice. He wants you to cry out to him. He wants you to to have a conversation with him. He is not this distant God who is far away that can't be reached. He's not. He is right there. The Bible says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. There are times when you can ask your best friend for prayer and they ain't going to pray for you. But you ask the Father and you go before the Father. Listen, he's there every single time. Come on, somebody say amen to that. He's there every single time. Hallelujah. 
So in, in today's context, he, he's looking for a culture. He's looking for a culture of people who will just talk to him. That's it. Just talk to him. I want to encourage you today that if your prayer life is struggling in any way or if it's weak, just ask God to give you strength. Just say, God, help me. Help me. I, I want to commune with you more. I want to have more conversations with you. I want to spend more time with you. I want to I I talk with you more. And let me tell you, you will. And if you can make it a daily dedication to do that, then I promise you he'll meet with you every single time. And it could be the way that, that, that Melissa and I have to do it when we're driving. And we ain't got our kids with us. Come on, somebody. <laughs> When I'm on my way to school, it's arguing and fighting and doing this and doing that. And we're going over spelling words and we're going over this, you know, all this kind of stuff. It, I, there's, there's not, that's not the right time. That's not the right time. However, I do pray with my kids every single day before we pull into the school parking lot. We pray protection over them. We pray blessing over them. All that kind of stuff, right? That's important. But that's not the right time for me to have a one-on-one -on -one with God. Because I know I'm not going to get that because I'm going to be distracted or I'm going to be held back or the very second that I say, dear God, is going to be, daddy, right? And, and it's just going to throw everything off. But man, my time, like I drop them off, my time from, the, I drop them off till I get to my house, I'm by myself. And if, 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 I'm, t if I'm being selfish and I just want to bump some music and, you know, and whatever and get to where I'm going and I waste my time, listen, I'm, I'm wasting precious time with the Father. Those are perfect moments that you can say, you know what, instead of turning up the radio right now, I'm going to converse with God. And instead of worrying about my day and thinking about all these things that I'm going to have to do when I get to work, I'm going to go ahead and have a conversation with God. Listen, every day you should start out with God. Really, every day. I know some people, man, before they even put their feet on the ground coming off of their mattress, they're already talking to God. And that's great. Like that, I believe that's the way it should be. That's wonderful. And we need to keep that up if we're doing that. I think that's great. But don't go to bed at night if you haven't even talked to him today. How unwise is that of us? But how also, listen... How inconsiderate. He's done everything for you. He's blessed you with what you got. Here you are complaining on your way to work about work when he's the one that blessed you with that job. And you can't say, God, I thank you for this even though I don't like it. You need to talk with him. I'm moving on. Number one, prayers of petition. Number two, conversational prayers. And number three is this, prayers of intercession. Prayers of intercession. Now, if you know anything about us, if you know anything about the church, we believe in intercession, right? Intercession is important. Like, we, we have to be interceding, right? It's so, so crucial. Now, intercession, let me just stop right here and say this. In intercession it is not just for the mature folk in the house, if you know what I mean. Intercession is, is not for... Just the, the, the wiser folks, the wiser in number, it's not just for them in the church. Okay? Uh, intercession is not just for the widows of the church. Come on, can I get an amen? amen. Intercession is for everyone. When we say, oh, the church has intercessory prayer, we think, oh, that's just a bunch of, of wiser ladies getting together and having a powwow. No, it's not. Like, if you know that your church is getting together at 1030 on a Thursday morning and you're sitting on your couch, then you ought to be interceding with us. Or if you're driving or you're doing this, or you're doing that, be mindful that at 1030 someone's praying for you. Why don't you join with them? If you can't be here, that's all right. But join them in prayer. Listen, the ministry of intercession is for the engagement of everyone in the house. The ministry of intercession is for the engagement of everyone in the house. Well, pastor, I'm not called to intercede. Who said that? Who told you 
that you're not called to pray? Who told you that you're not called to intercession? Before you're a leader, you're an intercessor. Before you're ever given a platform, you need to know you're an intercessor. Man, there ain't nobody that's going to be allowed on this stage unless I know they got a good prayer life. Hello? Right? Like, come on. It's the reality. Like, that's the way it should be. Man, intercession is so important. It's so important. Listen, you serve a God who is an intercessor. You serve a God who is an intercessor. The, The book of Hebrews says that right now, not later on, but right now, this very second, Jesus is constantly making intercession for you. That's what it says in Hebrews. He's constantly making intercession for you. We serve a God who is an intercessor, who is constantly in intercession on your behalf, but yet you can't carve out five minutes out of your day. Listen, we have got to be people that are intercessors. We have got to intercede on the behalf of ourselves. We've got to intercede on the behalf of our family because they are messed up. We need to intercede for them. Hello. We need to intercede for our boss because they treat us like garbage sometimes. But we got to intercede for them. Listen, I've seen workplaces flipped upside down because of the prayers of a few. Come on, don't hold back. Don't be shy. Don't be hesitant. Like God is ready to move. He is ready to move. He is the God of intercession. So right now, at this very moment, right now, this very second, at 11.33 a.m., God is interceding for you. Right now. Right now, God is interceding for you for that family problem. Right now. God is interceding for you for your freedom from that addiction. Right now. He's doing it right now. Come on, somebody say nice and loud. Right now. now. Amen. Amen. And number four is this, is prayers of thanksgiving. We're talking about four types of prayer that shape a culture. Prayers of petition, conversational prayers, prayers of intercession, and lastly, prayers of thanksgiving. Prayers of thanksgiving. Having a thankful heart. Having a thankful heart. Going to him. In prayer because we are thankful for what he's doing. Going to the Father because we know that he is doing stuff on our behalf right now. And that gives me a reason to be thankful. It gives me a reason to rejoice. But it certainly allows me to have a heart of gratitude. And a spirit of gratitude that rises up within me. And listen, prayers of thanksgiving are important. Paul addresses petitions. He addresses your personal prayer. Those things are important. They really are. He addresses intercession. But then he addresses thanksgiving. I I find it incredibly interesting, but also compelling, that thanksgiving is in the same sentence as these different types of prayers. But here's why it is so important. Because before you ever receive an answer, you ought to thank Him for it first. So Paul says, listen, this is coming from the Father. Paul says, hey, first of all, before anything else in your life, these things are important. Your petitions, your prayers, and your intercession. But then he stops right there and he says, Now, before all these other things, I I must mention one more thing. Thanksgiving. Because everything that you bring to the Father with your petition, your prayers, and your intercession will not be met unless you have a thankful spirit. We have got to thank Him when we go before Him. That answer will come 
but we have got to thank him for that answer before the answer is ever provided to us church thanksgiving is just as important as the other three that are mentioned so he doesn't leave it off he says you have to have these things these are important they're very very important but before you can go to the next level, before anybody gets saved, all these type of things that mentions next, you have got to be thankful. I'm about to do the thing that you just prayed about. Can you be thankful for it? I'm about to move on your behalf. It's coming, but can you be thankful for it? I heard your petition. You've made your need known. I've heard your prayer. I've listened to your intercession. And guess what? I am working on your behalf. But before I provide the answer, I need to hear some thanksgiving come from your heart. It's so important. When you make your petitions, your prayer, and your intercession known, you cannot leave that moment without thanking him for it. Well, I've been waiting for five years for that answer. You haven't thanked him for the answer yet. I promise you, if you thank him for it, you'll see it come to pass. God, I thank you that everything that I have prayed, God, I praise you because everything that I have brought before you, I know, Lord, I know that it has been met in your throne room. I know that you have heard my prayer. I know that you have heard my plea. I know that you have heard my cry. I know that you have heard my petition. I know that you have heard my intercession. So God, I'm just going to praise you right now. I don't see it yet in front of me. But God, I'm going to thank you for it, God. Because I know if I ask anything in your name, it shall be done. It shall be done. There's just something about a thankful spirit that unlocks what you're believing for. Something about having a thankful spirit that literally puts the key in and unlocks that thing for you in your life. Being thankful is crucial. It's important. It's necessary. So instead of waiting on the answer to get here. I want to encourage you this morning. We've got to praise him knowing that he heard us and that the answer is on the way. Come on, somebody say amen nice and loud. Instead of waiting on the answer to get here, we've got to praise him knowing that he heard us. First of all, he heard us. We know he heard us. But that the answer, church, it is on its way. It is on its way. Stand to your feet with me today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For those that are worried about the Cowboys game, don't you worry, baby. I'm getting you out right in time. Right in time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Prayer. It's so important to us. And listen, if prayer is imp important to the church, prayer needs to be important to you. And you may have a good prayer life. You may have a strong prayer life or whatever it may be. But I want to encourage you. Don't just pray for yourself all the time. Make sure you're praying for your church. Make sure you're praying for your church leadership. Make sure you're praying for your, your worship team. And the guys that run the cameras. And the guys that run everything in the back. And the, the children's volunteers. And the greeters up front. Make, make sure that you're praying for the church. It's important. It's important. You shouldn't just pray for the church on Thursday mornings at 10.30 a.m. You should make that a part of your daily conversation with God so God thank you for what you're doing there God I know that Sunday morning you touched people I'm thankful for that God God I know that you completely wrecked that person's life I looked across the room and I saw tears going down their face I knew that you were moving in their life thank you God those are the kind of things that we got to be doing as a church amen 
So what I want to do is I want to take just the next few minutes. And I just want us to pray. I'm not trying to take another hour of your time. I just want to take a few minutes. Can you carve out a few minutes to just pray with the Father right now? This is your time to make your petition known. This is your time to have a conversation with him. This is also your time to intercede. But last but not least, it's your time to be thankful. I just want to encourage you. Get on your knees. Come down front. Fill up the altar. Kneel here. Pray. Go before the Father. You're released now. Whatever you got to do, just begin to pray. Just begin to pray. God, we go before you right now as a praying church, as an intercessory church, God. Lord, as a church, God, that can believe, God, with prayer and petition and thanksgiving, God, and intercession, Father. We go before you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just make your petitions known to him. Thank you, Lord. Come on, have a conversation. Just pray with the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just intercede. Whatever it is that you need to intercede for, go to have some intercession time. But don't forget to be thankful. Don't forget to be thankful. Come on, this is your time. Make your petitions known. You may need to go to someone in the church on the other side of the room from you and say, I just need you to couple your faith with me in prayer about something. Come on, don't hold back. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy. Don't be hesitant. You may feel the need to pray over someone in the church right now. Just go to him. Don't be disobedient. Find them. Pray for them. Whatever it is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We come before you, Father. Lord, we make our petitions known to you today, God. Lord, you know what we're going through. Lord, you know our needs. You know our our, our, our things that are, we're facing. You know the longings of our heart. You know our desires, God. Or there are things, Father God, Lord, that we need, Father. And today, God, we're coming before you, Lord. We're coming before you, Father. We're approaching your throne room of grace, God. We approach you boldly, Lord. We don't hold back. We don't hesitate. But we approach you boldly, God. Boldly, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're hearing our petition. You're hearing our prayers. I thank you, Father God, Lord, that there is intercession that is being made known right now, God, within individuals right now in Jesus' name, God, that the spirit of intercession is rising up within us right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, some of you have even said in the past that you just you want to be an intercessor. And I believe there's a spirit of intercession that's going to come over you right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you that you intercede for us. Thank you, Lord. So, Father God, we will choose to be a people of intercession. We will intercede, God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, we're going to be thankful today, God. Lord, we're going to be grateful, Father, for what you're doing, God. We thank you, Lord, for all of these prayers that are being lifted up to you right now, God. I thank you that they're being met in heaven, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that you are working on our behalf, God. Lord, you're turning that financial situation around right now. It's being turned around right now. Thank you for it. Come on, I just feel that in the spirit right now, that there's, there's someone or, or a couple in this room, I don't know what it is, that you, you've, you've been literally trying to figure out ways to make money left and right. You come up with this idea, this idea, this idea, this idea, just to try to make ends meet, just to try to cover th the bills, but also to put food on your table and, and all that, and God's saying, just come to me, come to me, I want to bless you, I, 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 I want to bless you, I want to multiply things in your life, hallelujah. Just come to me with your petition. Come to me with your needs. Hallelujah. Right now, and I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to move on your behalf. I'm going to move on your behalf. I'm going to move on your behalf. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We're grateful, Lord. We're thankful, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know the desires of our hearts, God. 
Thank you, Lord God. You know, our beginning from our end, Father. Lord, you're with us every step of the way, every single day, God. Lord, we thank you, Father, God, that you're speaking to us right now, God. Speak. Speak to us, Father. Speak to us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to wrap up this moment, but I want you to take time right now to just be thankful. Come on, just praise him for everything that you've been praying about right now. Praise him for everything that you've been praying about. Thank him. Thank him for everything that you've been praying about. Thank you, Father. God, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Father God. Lord, we thank you, God, for what you're doing, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are working on our behalf. We thank you, Lord, just as that old gospel song goes, that late in the midnight hour, God, you're turning it around. Lord, I thank you that you're turning it around for us right now. You're turning it around, God. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that the answer is on its way. We may not see it right now, but we know it's on its way. God, we're going to be thankful, Father. So, Lord, we thank you for this morning, and we bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope the Lord spoke to you through today's message. If you have any prayer need or praise reports, please send us an email at cotcdfw at gmail.com. Please like and share this message so we can reach as many people as possible. We hope you have a great week. We'll see you soon.